Good morning. Morning. Yeah, thank you. You can't talk to me, you know. I'm only human after all. I might be a magician, but I'm a silly human. So we're all well today? Yes. Huh? yes. So do I look like you expected me to look? Yes. Oh, that's a disappointment. I really thought I was going to be a shock and a surprise to you. So there you go. So uh, what I need to know, first of all, is hands up all the kids who come to school every day. Well, not, not quite, because you don't go to school on weekends, do you? No, that's right. So hands up all those who come to school every day there is school. Mm, just about everybody. Hands up all those who pay attention when they're in school. Not so many. Okay. <laughs> hands up all those who hate putting their hands up. So hard to decide on that, isn't it? Yeah. What I need you to do is put one hand up in the air, because I need to be able to count everybody before we start. Yeah. In fact, if you put two hands up, I can count twice as fast. It's very good. Now you exercise your fingers like this, gets out all the E numbers. Good. Close your hand into a fist like this. Wave your hand over the top. Under the bottom. Over the top. Under the bottom. Under the bottom. Over the top. Are we all there? This has got nothing to do with the magic show, but it's great from up here. Okay? <laughs> what you do now is you snap your fingers, reach inside, and if you can find in there a little red hanky, it means you're a magician. Nobody found a little red hanky. Well, that's a pity, because you see, that means I'm the only magician here today, and I get to perform all the magic tricks. But I will need one or two people to help, and they're the ones who sit with their legs crossed, arms crossed, eyes crossed. And, sorry, no, not eyes, just legs and arms will do nicely. And we get on with things. Okay. Now, when I went to school, which was a very long time ago, my school teacher made me stand in the corner and wear a funny little hat like this. Had a big letter D on the front. Would anybody have any idea what the letter D stood? Yes? Dubs. It's the correct answer. Now, how did you know that, young man? My dad told me. Your dad told you. That's good. Because you wouldn't know otherwise, would you? No. And you know, when I left school at 42, my school teacher gave me this hat for a present. Imagine being in school at 42 years of age. I tried to put the hat on yesterday. Guess what happened? I broke my hat. I don't have a hat anymore. What do I have now? A fan. A fan. This is the only fan I've got, girls. Not like Westlife, a boy's own. They've got millions, haven't they? You'd think they'd give me one, wouldn't you? I used to make these little aeroplanes and throw them at the school teacher. You don't do that, do you? No. No, because if the school teacher threw them back, they'd poke you in the eye, which is very painful. I almost did it. But um, I decided now, from now on, instead of wearing it on my head for a hat, I could go to the cinema and get... Oh, I was going to put ice cream in there, but that's because I'm silly, I suppose. But you're right, popcorn. You see the little hole in the bottom? All the bits of popcorn fall out, so you have to block it up with something you're not using. Oh, yes, it hurts, yes. Like this, for instance, a fancy coloured handkerchief. Now, tell me, have you ever seen a magician with a fancy coloured handkerchief like this? No. Yeah. 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 You have, some of you, some of you not. Yeah, we see, this would be a posh magician, because I'm a posh magician. You may have seen a magician with a plain coloured handkerchief like this. Would I be correct in assuming that? Yeah. Yes. yes, he would be a poor magician. Yes. Not only do I have one of these and one of these, but in this beautiful chrome bucket painted aluminium, I have a second plain coloured handkerchief like this. So that's two plain and one fancy. Sounds a little like a knitting pattern, doesn't it? Any of young ladies knit? No? Oh, you do? Oh, good. I was wondering who knits all the jumpers that we wear, because nobody seems to knit anymore. Now, I'm going to tie these together in a knot. Now, any idea what kind of a knot we should use? Yes? Uh, sorry? A reef knot. A reef knot. Wow. That's better known as a granny knot, isn't it? Yes, okay, I didn't say tie grandma in a knot, I said a granny knot, yes. Now, a granny knot's a left over right, right over left, through the middle, around the back, and around there like this. Did you all follow that? No. Yeah. <laughs> no neither did I. So there we go. Now, to make sure we don't lose them, I should place them in this empty bucket. Can you all see the bucket is empty? Yeah. Listen. Hear the hollow sound? <laughs> so my head is empty as well. My school teacher told me one day I was going to be an astronaut. <laughs> you know what an astronaut is? Yeah. Yes. I told my father, he said, no, son. He said, you're taking up space, which is a different thing altogether. <laughs> yes. Now, the two handkerchiefs go inside here. You promise me you'll keep your eye on them. Don't take your eye off them for a moment. I shall make this back into a hat shape. I shall throw the fancy one up in the air and catch it first time. And when I do, you'll all cheer really loudly. How will you cheer? Really loudly. No, no, you go, hooray. <laughs> hooray. Not, not bad for rehearsal. OK, here we go. Hooray. Hey. Very good, yes. I almost missed it the second time, okay. Now the handkerchief is inside here. To make sure it doesn't come out to a little hole in the bottom or out to the hole in the top, I shall fold it flat like this. I shall fan myself to cool myself down. It's quite warm in here today. If I fan these two handkerchiefs like this, do you see how they move? Yeah. Most people think that's just the breeze. But listen. Do you hear the hollow sound? 
not my head anymore. The hollow sand is the handkerchief we placed in here has dematerialized, which means it's not material anymore. But it does rematerialize somewhere else. Any idea where it might be? In the bucket. In the bucket. Wow, you're really on the ball today, aren't you? Now, if it has arrived inside the bucket, has tied itself between the other two, you would be so excited you would give yourselves a big cheer, wouldn't you? So we're going to have a look and see. We will count three, two, one, and see if it has arrived. Are you ready? Three, 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 uh, two. Hold on a moment. I know it's early, so I will count you in. One, two, three, and then you go three, two, one. You ready? Okay. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Is it there? Yes, it is. Give yourselves a big cheer for me so clever today. Great. Anybody here like going to visit the doctor? No. Do you know, in the next Olympic Games, there will be a brand new game called the Balloon and Spoon Race. And the idea of the game is that you will have a wooden spoon and a balloon, and you will have to run along like this. Do you know who Ozzy Osbourne is? Yes. Do you know how he learned to walk? Yes. Rehearsing the Balloon and Spoon Race. Sharon! Sharon! <laughs> Would you examine that spoon? Would you examine that balloon? Can you find any glue or sellotape on the balloon? Can you find any glue or sellotape on the spoon? Is there anything inside the balloon, young lady? Air. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very clever this morning, aren't we? Now, the idea is we're using a clear balloon because we don't want anybody to cheat. And a wooden spoon because, well, it could put stones in here and magnets and we wouldn't want that to happen. But when I was reading about this, I realised that it reminded me of when I was a little boy going to visit my doctor. I was always so scared I used to be shaking like that. Because I used to think I was like a balloon and if he gave me an injection I'd go BANG! <laughs> now this balloon is not afraid of this wooden spoon because there's no sharp edges. This balloon is not afraid of a magic wand because there's no sharp edges. Unless of course it has a long red thread hanging out of it. So why is there a long red thread hanging out of this balloon? Or out of this um, magic wand? Well, I'll tell you why. Because in here is something that is no friend of, an, of a balloon. It's a long sharp thread. Now, can you imagine me as a little boy going to my doctor shaking like this? And my doctor shaking like this because he was 92. <laughs> and he used to chase me around the surgery like that. And he'd never catch me. One day he decided to get me in a headlock. <laughs> Not a very nice thing for your doctor to do. And he tried to stop me shaking. And he tried to stop himself shaking. And we're both going like this. And he kind of just lined me up a little bit like this. And then he stuck in the needle like that. And straight out the far side like that. Now, what happened then was he pulled the big red thread right through me like this. Now, I didn't go bang, did I? No, you don't go bang when you get an injection. But then he swung me around the surgery like that. <laughs> I wasn't too happy with that. Now, the reason I didn't go bang, of course, is I wasn't nervous of my doctor. And there's no need to be. If I had to be, I would have gone bang like that. But as I said, I didn't, and that's why I'm here this morning to do your little show. So just don't be scared of your doctor, okay? That's fine. Okay. Now, there's two ways we can do this show. One is the way we're doing it at the moment, and the other way is with applause. So which way would you like to do it? Applause. Thank you very much. So we can do it now, then. Yes, thank you. Oh, 